Hello, today's class is on film theory and what are the key features of this very uh, 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 relatively speaking a recent field of academic inquiry. So, uh, how did it all begin? The first step towards uh, film theory was taken by Vachel Lindsay in his Art of the Moving Picture in 1915 and Hugo Musterberg in the Photoplay a Psychological Study in 1916. Both of these works consider this new medium in the context of other art forms, for example, theatre, painting and uh, uh, other works of art. While Lindsay draws parallels between uh, film and art such as for example, architecture, sculpture and poetry, Musterberg goes much further in arguing for the unique properties of the cinema by focusing on the psychological responses of the viewer and on the aesthetic properties of the film. So, we have to consider that these studies which were done sometime during 1915 and 1916 were sort of pioneering works in the field of um, uh, film theory. So, um, one of the foremost theories of films is author theory. Um, most of us associate author theory and the study of directors as uh, uh, the main person or uh, the way directors uh, uh, influence a film, uh, that idea um, and we associate it with uh, the French new wave critics. And uh, we also know the establishment of a journal called Cahier du Cinema, but it all began in reality it all began much before the French new wave of film directors. So, uh, author theory in 1910 by the British magazine Bioscope and which identified some directors as worthy of um, special mention and worthy of academic studies. In Germany, the term Autoren, A-U-T-O-R-E-N, Autoren film was used and filmmaker and novelist Alexander Astru, he coined the term camera pen uh, in his article La Camera Stilo. It was in 1948 and it called for a new language in filmmaking. Uh, according to Astru, camera should be used the way writers use their pens. So, therefore, the word camera stilo. Astro posited that filmmakers should make more uh, personal kinds of films and uh, this was something that most uh, followers of author theory uh, believed in. Now, uh, in America, there was a critic called Andrew Saris, who was a leading critic who wrote for uh, The Village Voice. So, uh, according to Andrew Saris, director is the sole author of his work. So, again you see there is a connection between what uh, uh, people like Alexandra uh, Estrusen and uh, people like uh, Andre Bezon more famously in France had to say. So, this is exactly what Andrew Saris proclaimed in Village Voice, the director is the sole author of his work. So, um, According to Saris, this is regardless of the contribution of the writers, producers or actors. Now, Astro wanted to raise the status of cinema from a working class form of entertainment to high art form and uh, French critic Andre Bezon's collection of essays, What is Cinema, uh, published in 1967 and 1971 in two volumes. So, what is cinema is a collection of realist criticism and theory. Bezov found um, Lev Koloshev, and we will talk about Lev Koloshev and Einstein's emphasis on montage opposed to the realistic possibilities of cinema. He praised the American directors such as Orson Welles and uh, William Wyler for the way images were used to convey reality, something that uh, Bezon felt was missing in cinema since the expressionistic films of um, Eric von uh, 
Stroim and F. W. Monroe. Bezon praised uh, Orson Welles and William Wyler for their use of techniques of deep focus and the long take to represent space and time as continuous and whole uh, and lending that special touch of reality. So, remember these two terms long take and deep focus and these are extremely important when we do uh, the theory of uh, cinematography. One of the founders of the French film journal uh, Cahiers du Cinema, Bezon influenced the criticism of such figures as uh, Franz, uh, Francois Truffaut, uh, Jean-Luc Godard, Claude Chabrol, Eric Romer and Jacques Rivet who wrote for the journal uh, that was uh, Bezon's Cahiers du Cinema and it soon became an influential journal of French films. The policies proposed by Bezon and his followers were put into practice by the filmmakers of the French New Wave of the 60s. They criticized films that led to high production, relied on big stars and uh, followed the genre conventions, though the idea was to break these things in, or interrogate um, uh, genres and uh, uh, make uh, more personal kinds of films, uh, not too expensive and most importantly uh, breaking away from the star system. Now, uh, cinema and modernism, modernism is also one of the key theories of uh, um, literary studies, academic studies. So, modernism as we all know as a movement it came into prominence after the first world war, it marks a break from uh, the Victorian bourgeois morality rejecting 19th century optimism and the modernists present a deeply pessimistic picture of a culture in shambles. Uh, another key theorist that you should know is uh, Walter Benjamin who wrote his uh, seminal essay, The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction where Benjamin observed that the camera was a surgeon's scalpel which laid bare the optical unconscious. So, um, you have two terms camera is still that astro gives us and we have a camera as a scalpel, a surgeon's a scalpel uh, who um, uh, it is an instrument which uh, can lay bare the optical unconscious. Okay, so, that is a term given to us by Walter Benjamin and nowhere were these uh, effects of modern technology and artistic movements were more strongly felt and disseminated than in cinema. So, let us see how forces of modernism impacted the very young art form. For example, consider German expressionism and modernism. So, the impact of expressionism uh, or expressionistic movement was soon realized in cinematic art. We all know uh, Walter Munch's famous painting Scream, which, wa which came almost at the end of the 19th century and how did cinema uh, employ the expressionistic devices. So, Robert Wines, the cabinet of Dr. Caligari in 1919 and it is considered as one of the foremost expressions of this aesthetic. It is the narrative of a mad doctor who uses a somnambulist uh, a sleepwalker to commit crimes for him. Wine presents his actors in exaggerated makeup and places them in distorted sets and angular architecture. This was one of the key features of expressionistic theatre and also expressionistic cinema. Dr. Caligari embodies all the stylistic features of expressionism, chiaroscuro for example, which is interplay of lights and shadows, oblique angles, special distortions and the idea that danger lurks round the corner. Also uh, consider the way the expressionists consider city as a threatening site and uh, revel in depicting morally ambiguous characters. Uh, 
Other landmark expressionistic films of this period are Nosferatu which uh, was released in 1922 and The Last Laugh 1924 and also Fritz Lang's Metropolis uh, which was released in 1927. So, directors such as Fritz Lang, Carl Freund, uh, Billy Wilder and F. W. Murnau, they took expressionism to America. The result of this transcontinental exodus was a hybrid of German expre uh, expressionism, French poetic realism and American pulp which uh, subsequently resulted in film noir. F. W. Murnau uh, was uh, yet another early exponent of uh, expressionism along with uh, Fritz Lang and G. W. Pops, his films are full of dread and suggest a world between reality and fantasy. The themes of repression and sexuality recur which echo something of Murnau's personal life since he was believed to be a closet homosexual during the period of Germany's homophobic laws. His films are known for creating a sense of an alternative universe and one of the best horror films of all times, Nosferatu, a symphony of terror is a classic example of German expressionism with Max Schreck playing Count Orlock, a Dracula like character. Okay, and let us also talk about the first ever science fiction film which was Fritz Lang's Metropolis released in 1927 and it was also um, one of the first films that question um, the uh, dehumanizing effect of industrialization on people. It is also believed to be one of the most expensive films of its time. Uh, while we move on to the major film movements, let us uh, just get acquainted with what is a plot in cinema. So, plot is the narrative foundations upon which all stories are built. As we all know, text is a verbal written or um, visual artifact and narrative is the way a story is told. Film combines all these elements and therefore is more complex of arts. Most stories reflect the universal human experiences which are birth, growth, going on adventure, facing temptations, winning, losing, falling in and out of love and life lessons derived. Okay. So, the, we have already done plots in uh, uh, quite uh, detail when we were talking about archetypal criticism and also formalism. So, please refer to those lectures. Uh, due to time constraints, I would not be able to dwell much on what is plot. Let us move on to uh, a dis quick discussion of major film movements. So, uh, one of the most prominent film movement of all times is the French New Wave. Of course, we have Italian Neorealism also, but uh, we will talk about it in a moment. But let me begin with introducing you to the French New Wave. So, as we already talked about who is an author. So, author is someone who creates, who writes. But when we talk about a term like authorism or author theory, what do we mean? So, the word author is a French term for author. In, in film lexicon, however, an author is not a writer, but a director. So, we might ask, how does a director become an author? So, well, it all began on March 30, 1948. And Alexandre Astro, I have already mentioned him, a literary critic comes in asked, he published his uh, La Camera Stilo in the journal Le Croix Francais. He announced a new wave in cinema and he based his article on analogy comparing a film director to a novelist whereby a camera becomes a pen. The comparison implied that a cinema has a uh, a language of its own and the idea was very clear to elevate cinema to the level of other arts and to emphasize on its personal and psychological value. Now, director Francois Truffaut, 
He built on this idea a few years later when he wrote his celebrated essay, A Certain Tendency in the French Cinema, and I am giving you the translation in English. It uh, was published in 1954. This is a theoretical essay that paved the way uh, for the French new wave and ridiculed the so called tradition of quality, which was evident in, in, in films by uh, the likes of uh, Claude Anton Lara and Jean Delonor, where the script was paramount and the emphasis was on psychological realism and tasteful artistic production values. So, Truffaut and Ostro challenged the convention I idea that film is a producer's medium. Remember, even in Hollywood, um, studios were ruling the roost and the, uh, the, the entire uh, conflict between or distinction between rather um, classic Hollywood and American uh, new Hollywood period, uh, the two kinds of films that were made during the classic period and the new Hollywood period, they derive from this struggle. Basic premise was who controls the medium, the, um, the producer or the director. So, classic Hollywood is all about the, uh, uh, the supremacy of the studio, whereas the new Hollywood is all about the director being in complete control. So, who owns the medium, a producer or a director? Uh, Truffaut and Astro, they caused the idea of politics, these, these authors to become a central concept of the career and the new wave. Um, the new wave in France, uh, it is called the Noël wave, which relied on a close relationship between film criticism and filmmaking, that is the films were informed by manifestos by film critics who often became directors themselves. The Cayenne's critics formed their pantheon of important author directors including Jean Renoir, Robert Bresson, Jean Cocteau, Max Offels, Jacques Tati, Jacques Becker, uh, Alfred Hitchcock, Samuel Fuller, Howard Hawks, Nicholas Ray, Jean Vigo and so on. Though the author theory uh, has been hotly debated since its inception, it nevertheless is an important tool to understand films through an understanding of the directors and their body of works. The first of the Kayer critics uh, came up with a film uh, that was directed by Claude Chabrol, um, the La Beau Serge which was followed by Truffaut with his uh, The 400 Blows. Both films tackled the themes of uh, coming of age and were largely filmed on location. Other films such as uh, Roma's The Sign of a Lion and Rivet's Paris Nous Appartient, which was released in 1960, they followed, but it was the most influential film of this period was Godard's Aboud the Souffle or Breathless, that the new wave arrived with a bang. The Nouvelle Wake officially lasted from 1959 to 60, 61, but it had a lasting effect on later French and international films in that. In a particular idea, because author cinema or author centric cinema start developing in America, Germany, Great Britain, Brazil, Japan, Poland and the Czech Republic. So, one of the most influential movements of all times. I should also make mention of the Russian filmmaker Lev Kuleshev, um, who lived uh, between 1899 and 1970. Kuleshev's si significant contribution was the idea that each shot is like a building block and it derives its meaning from its context that is the shots placed around it. During his uh, workshop sessions at the state film school which is called VJIK, Kuleshev and his students would systematically dissect D. W. Griffiths, he is generally known as the father of modern cinema. So, his film Intolerance 1916 and viewed it several times editing, re-editing, assembling 
and reassembling it. So, Kuleshov further felt that juxtaposition of shots must be inherent in all film signs. Shots therefore acquire meaning when juxtaposed with what comes before and what comes after them. To put this principle into practice, Kuleshov juxtaposed several shots from several pieces of films which he then turned into a sequence. And uh, there is a term called the Kuleshov effect, uh, which is uh, in which he took footage of the face of uh, actor Ivan Mozukin and spliced in shots of a woman lying in a coffin, a little girl with a teddy bear and a bowl of soup. The audience reacted positively believing the actor had emoted very well. However, in reality the actor's face never changed expressions, only be, that is because only his still shot was used and Kuleshev concluded with this experiment that people react to a context along with the content to derive the meaning of a scene or a sequence. Kuleshev also pioneered what is known as creative geography by splicing together bits of action from various films taken from different spaces, countries and regions. We move on to talk about a seminal film of that period called Man with the Movie Camera which was made in 1929. Now uh, this is a name you should know, Zhigavartov who lived between 1896 and 1954. He was a pioneer Russian documentary maker. The Man with a Movie Camera combines radical politics with innovative aesthetics. Diga Vartov's brother Mikhail Kaufman handled the camera while his wife uh, edited the footage. The work is important because it demonstrated a non-linear narrative form for cinema. It is a documentary. It gives you a slice of life in Russia. The camera rolls as it captures the city mostly with, uh, which is Moscow. Uh, the city, its uh, sights and sounds, it bu its buses and trams, its citizens and its industries. So, the camera peers between the legs of a woman as she gives birth to a baby, watches children enraptured by a conjurer's act and tracks an ambulance carrying an accident victim. So, everyday kind of uh, incidents, the ev interest in everyday life in a documentary film following a very non-narrative kind of a uh, structure. It watches the forces of change as new traditions replace the old uh, when couples marry in a registry instead of a church, separate and divorce. Um, an unforgettable image from the film is that of a close-up shot of a magnified eye looking through the camera lens. It is a celebration of modern city and film aesthetics and political ideals. Man with a movie camera uses every available device of filming and editing including slow motion, animation, zoom, split screen, blurring focus and freeze. The film remains a great example of use of montage in the place where hard work is transformed into mechanized labor. As a socialist document, it heralds an age where workers would be able to afford leisure activities such as play soccer, visit theater, pole vault and go for swimming. The film made heroes out of the common people of the city, but of course as we know today, it is a more like a utopian view of uh, life and uh, communism. So, uh, one name that is uh, popularly or uh, most commonly ad associated with editing is montage. And what is montage? So, um, Russian filmmaker, the great Sergei Einstein. So, Sergei Einstein defined montage. A montage is assembled from separate images that provide a partial representation which are in combination and juxtaposition. Montage is a kind of editing technique and refers to a series of images and sounds that form a visual pattern. 
there may not be any clear logical or sequential pattern um, and uh, the montage editing came out of the Soviet experimental cinema of the 1920s. Though Lev Koloshev first thought of it, but now it is primarily associated with Sergei Eisenstein, who articulated the theories of montage and typage. Typage means using non-professional actors with clear physical traits in representative roles. Um, in the beginning, montage uh, uh, was uh, associated uh, or was read at an ideological level, suggesting conflict and collision. It was particularly used when an editor or filmmaker wanted to convey a great deal into a brief segment. Um, Einstein believed that collision and conflict must be inherent to all visual signs in film, juxtaposing shots make them collide or conflict and meaning is produced through this. So, one of the most uh, celebrated use of montage, uh, early montage was uh, seen in Einstein's own battleship Potemkin and then uh, later on Orson Welles used it to perfection in Citizen Kane, when there is an, an entire montage built around the dining table. It also reflects a, a passage of time. Now, um, one of the most prominent uh, uh, editing devices is jump cut and uh, generally we associate French author Jean-Louis Godard with this editing device. So, what is jump cut? Uh, the jump cut involves an uncanny jolt in a film's progress, drawing the viewer's attention to disturbing elision of time and space. A film might cut abruptly from one location to the next without any attempt to employ those devices or matches of eyeline that are essential for continuity. It was the French pioneer Georges Méliès who first recognized that a jump cut could generate magical or comic effects if the appearance of a subject filmed from a single vantage point was altered between shots. Although Godard was not the first to use or think about the possibilities of a jump cut, modern use of the technique has more or less come to be associated with him. So, when we say jump cut, we immediately think of Godard. Breathless, as the finished film was long by 30 minutes and instead of cutting out whole scenes or sequences, Godard chose to trim within scenes, thus creating the jagged cutting style. Now, uh, here I have just drawn a very crude picture. This is from uh, the scene where uh, the protagonist and uh, uh, his uh, lady love, they are driving in a car and we see the back of her head. So, this is the back of, just imagine this is the back of Jean Seberg's head and then suddenly we find her applying makeup. So, this is a makeup box and we see the back of her head is still holding a makeup box. So, this is a quick example of a jump cut. But then if you Google jump cut, um, you will find several videos which will show you exactly what it means. And here are a few links to some important websites um, and references for film theory. Please take a good look, of, look at it and make a note. We will continue with uh, our next lecture on film theory in the next class. Thank you very much.